Hello friends, I'm Drew from Borrow Lenses. Being stuck at home for several months, it's no wonder this has turned into a period of great reflection for so many of us. I'm no different. Not to brag or anything, but kind of amazing when it comes to questioning all the things I could have done better every day. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about some of our recent videos. After release, I often wish we would have elaborated on a particular topic, answered some of the questions a lot of you ask in the comments after viewing, or known about upcoming information or developments yet to be released at the time. So we created this series to do exactly that. Now, in my opinion, proper reflection upon the past requires three things. Unrelenting self-scrutiny, a big chunky sweater, and a good fire to stoke the flames of introspection. Well, three big check marks on that list. Please join me for our very first edition of BL by the Fireside. Today, we're revisiting our live streaming basics video. Namely, how to use your DSLR or mirrorless camera as a webcam for live streaming. As you'll recall, hardwiring into your computer is the simplest way to add production value to your broadcast. But you'll need an encoder or proper converter to do so. Now, in that video, I believe I said something along the lines of... Instead, the more important consideration is how do I get my video feed online? And this is where most people get held up. Try to plug a camera into your computer via USB, and you're just gonna end up with a big, expensive card reader. So, not necessarily true anymore. Shortly after releasing that video, with simultaneous growing demand and dwindling supply of webcams and encoders, some notable manufacturers like Canon and Fuji released apps allowing you to plug select cameras directly into your computer to use as a webcam. First, we'll take a look at the Sigma FP, which actually doesn't need an app at all. To set up, set USB mode to video class, UBC. Set your exposure and plug in your USB cable. You should now be able to select the FP as your webcam in just about any program you're using. Just remember to follow that order of operations. Since it's a built-in feature, it's compatible with both Windows and Macs, and it also made this the most reliable and simplest setup of everything I tried. Keep in mind though that autofocus is disabled when using the FP as a webcam. Next, I tried the Fujifilm Webcam X app. Big note for this is that it is currently only available for Windows. So after tracking down my old work ThinkPad, I downloaded the app from Fuji's site. I dialed in the naturally assumed settings and nothing. To use a compatible Fuji camera as a webcam like I did with the X-T3, turns out you need to be set to still mode. Make sure the connection mode under connection settings is set to USB tethered auto, though this may vary slightly depending on your camera's model. Dial in your settings, connect via USB-C, and then select the Fujifilm Webcam X app in your desired program. Remember that order of operations, just like with the FP. It is important. For such a new app, I was actually surprised how well this worked with Zoom, Teams, Facebook, and YouTube Live. Unfortunately, both the Fujifilm app and the FP have one huge drawback. Once the cable is plugged in, you are locked into those settings. In the case of the Webcam X app, you can't even adjust focus or exposure even if you're using a typical XF manual iris lens. I found this to be fairly crucial. Neither one of the cameras has an articulating LCD, so I had to point the camera where I would be sitting and gauge what the proper exposure should be. Problem is, programs have different exposure values, so what looked good on Teams was overexposed on Zoom and forced me to disconnect entirely, adjust, and then run the setup again. So, quick tip. If you're going to use a mirrorless or DSLR camera as a webcam for daily work life, vlogging, or live streaming, try to utilize one with an articulating screen to make your life easier when setting up. Luckily, I did that with the Canon EOS R when testing out the Canon Webcam Beta app. It's compatible with both Macs and Windows and thankfully still gives you full ability to change settings after you plug in. So download the app, 
plug in via USB-C, and then fire up your program of choice. Given the ability to adjust settings and the fact that Canon cameras are far more common and likely to already be in our possession compared to the Fuji and the FP, this is my favorite webcam app of the bunch. That being said, this app was definitely the glitchiest. I found myself having to power cycle or re-plug in the USB-C when programs struggled to read the signal. I also, for the life of me, could not get this to work with the Zoom app but I did find the Canon webcam app to be usable when dialing into a Zoom meeting in a browser. With work from home setups not going anywhere and live streaming continuously on the rise, I have no doubt we'll see more and more apps like this in the near future. But given these new capabilities, would I rank any of these definitively as the best camera for live streaming? No. Look, it all depends on what you're using it for. And why would you want to use a Sigma FP or a Fuji X-T3 or Canon camera as a webcam? I started exploring these apps because I had a Zoom interview and honestly wanted to flex a little. Adding a small bit of production quality to any platform where you're delivering a message can add a sense of professionalism and credibility, whether it's a live stream event or just your daily work life. So use what you have, what you're comfortable with, or what will work best for your needs. Oh, well, the fire is dying down. It's time to wrap up. Have you seen anything in our videos you'd like us to take a second look at or explore deeper? Leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Check us out at borrowlenses.com, and we'll see you next time by the fireside. Whew. Just got cozy. Just kidding, it's 90 degrees. I've been sweating profusely the entire time. <laughs>